every single one of us continue to reimagine how we connect intelligently in our local government, across our community, and really around the world. What I want to do now is I want to move from some of these examples to get really practical with you. I'm going to walk you through what I call the four laws of connectional intelligence. And as I share these laws, I want you to assess yourself. Where's your greatest opportunity to continue to grow and improve? The first law is to value visibly. Now again, so much of the ways that we valued others was built on our in-person body language, handshakes, head nods, dinners. This is how we build trust and connection. But as we all know, valuing visibly today is not just those traditional cues. They matter, they matter a lot, but valuing visibly is also about things like respecting people's time, inboxes, and schedules. It's knowing that running great meetings with our teams and our communities is about thinking like a TV show host. Within the first three minutes, making sure everyone knows, here's what success looks like, here's why you're all invited, here's how I want everyone to contribute in this meeting. Valuing visibly is also about acknowledging those individual differences. I know one leader, she used to run traditional meetings in the office, she's completely changed her approach in the last few years. She always sends a quick agenda with two questions. She wants everyone in the meeting to be ready to answer at the beginning of the meeting. And then she calls on those with the most diverse or unique ideas. She told me she has heard more from her introverts and her junior colleagues using this format in a way that she had never heard from them in the old school traditional office. First of all, just that thoughtful agenda with questions in advance allowed introverts to have time to think to be ready to share their ideas, not caught off guard by the gregarious extroverts. Second, by getting everyone to write their ideas first in the first five minutes on a chat tool, on video, or in an in-person whiteboard, it allowed junior team members to feel like their ideas mattered just as much as senior team members. Research shows the first three people that speak in a meeting tend to be the three most senior people. They tend to take up 80% of the airtime. So again, by acknowledging some of the shifts and thinking differently about how to connect her team more intelligently, it not only made a significant difference, it allowed her to maximize much more thoughtfulness of her team than she was doing in the traditional in-person meeting. Valuing visibly is also about practicing radical recognition. Think about it, if someone stayed up all night working on a project for you, and in the office they used to see the smile on your face the next day, now they get an email that says K period or THX. They don't feel valued visibly. So what does it look like to value visibly today? Simple things make a big difference. Understanding how to engage and connect across introverts to extroverts. Introverts need time to think. Those thoughtful agendas isn't just a nice to have, it will make or break whether you get their ideas. Making sure there's open lines of communication. If you have 30 people in a meeting where only six people talk, maybe instead say, you know, if you have another idea, send me an email by Friday. Or pausing halfway through that meeting and saying, I want everyone to get into smaller groups of three, talk about what hasn't been discussed yet that should, and then we're gonna hear from those smaller groups. Extroverts need airtime, so manage it. I'm a big fan of the breakout rooms or really thinking like that TV show host today where we're bringing in that perspective and almost thinking like MCs in our community. Valuing visibly is also about understanding we don't just have different traditional body language styles. We have what I call different digital body language styles. On one end, there are those I call the digital natives. And on the other end, there are those I call the digital adapters. A digital native is someone who thrives in connection through virtual means. They love text, they love IM, they hate voicemail, they hate phone calls out of the blue. They like frequent, short, fast messages. They feel radically recognized with that quick response. On the other end of the spectrum are digital adapters, much more reluctance to technology, prefer in person, more of an inconsistent use of each channel. I like to say I'm a digital native and my father is a digital adapter. When he sends me a text message, it starts with, Dear Erica, it ends with, Love, Dad. I have to scroll through it because it's as long as a handwritten letter. <laughs> Haven't quite taught him a text is not the same as a letter, but it's just an example to show that we're not all the same. And as we continue to reimagine 
how we connect thoughtfully within our local government, across our communities. We have to remember to navigate these differences and remember that we do have different styles. That doesn't mean we have to just adhere to one person's style, but make sure we have different mediums to spread information to share versus just adhering to one.